الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وسيدنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My dear brothers and sisters it is part of our faith it is part of our aqeedah it is part of our creed that there is no life that we can live without being tested and tried by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah tells us that He created us to be tested. The one who created death and life to test you, to try you, who amongst you is best in deeds. This is a statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is spoken directly to us. When we hear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, لِنَبْلُوَكُمْ To test you, we don't think them, we think us. We personalize the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we hear this verse, we become alert and we say, I will be tested. Allah created me to test me. Allah created us as human beings to test us, to see who amongst us is best. And without a doubt, we see greatness in people when they are tested. And that is why the Prophet wasallam told us that the best of Allah's creation, they were tested the most severely, the Prophets wasallam. And amongst the Prophets, it was the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam who was tested the most severely. And that is why when we live our lives and we go through difficulties and when we go through hardships and trials, we remember that we are following in the footsteps of all of the Prophets and amongst them the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We are being tested the way those who came before us were tested. Do the people think they will be left alone because they say we believe? And they will not be tested? We certainly tested, we tried those who came before them. And so my brothers and sisters, when we look out in society today, and we see, you know, there's a spread of immorality. There's a spread of sin. There's a spread of temptation. And we feel like we are surrounded. We should not be surprised. We should not say, you know what, I just can't deal with this. We should understand that this is part of the test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should understand that Jannah, paradise, is not cheap. The Prophet وسلم, he said, he said Jannah, bil makarih. Jannah has been surrounded by hardships, by difficulties. النار, and the hellfire is surrounded shahawat, with temptations, with desires. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, straight up Allah tells us, that in this life, there are those things that are provided for us as a trial, as a temptation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Zuyina lil nasi hubbu shahawat. We have beautified for mankind, for human beings, love of worldly desires. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a list of things that people would want in this life. Amongst them wealth and property and so on and so forth. And then Allah says, ذَلِكَ مَتَاعُ الْحَيَاةِ dunya." These are only the pleasures of this worldly life. Don't get it twisted. Don't think that these pleasures that you face, that you have in front of you, these temptations, that they're going to last forever. Know that there are just temptations in this worldly life. وَاللَّهُ عِنْدَهُ حُسْنُ المآب. Allah has with Him the best return. Meaning that is where our focus is. That is what we look towards as believers and that is our aqidah. That is our creed, my brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
allowed the shaitan to tempt us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed the shaitan to be as a test and trial for us. When the shaitan straight up told us what he plans to do. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us of how the shaitan threatened mankind. He said, Wala udillannahum. He said, I will mislead them. Wala umanniyannahum. I will arouse in them their desires. Wala amurannahum. I will command them. And my brothers and sisters, we should hear this and say, The shaitan command me? How dare you command me? Because it is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who commands me. And so Allah reminds us, Ya'iduhum wa yumannihim. He, 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 uh, he promises, he makes these promises to them. وَيُمَنِّيهِمْ He arouses in them these false desires. وَمَا يَعِدُهُمْ وَالشَّيْطَانُ إِلَّا غُرُورًا The only thing that the shaitan is promising to you and me, my brothers and sisters, no matter how tempting it may seem, no matter how enticing it may seem, it is nothing but deception. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us of those who fall prey to the attack of the shaitan. Those who give in to their desires above submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who give their desires precedence, preference over what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded when we know, and I believe this with my heart, my brothers and sisters, as Muslims, as believers, we know that what Allah has commanded for us is better for us. Yes, it is difficult. And it's okay to say that. It is okay to say, you know what? I find some of the commandments of Islam to be difficult. It's hard to get up for Fajr. It's hard to fast the month of Ramadan. It's hard to give up this and to give up that. That's fine. But we know, once again, it is part of our creed that what Allah has promised for us, what Allah has delivered to us, what Allah has commanded to us is better for us. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us of those who fall, fall victim to the shaitan. Allah says, Do you see the one who has taken their own desires as their God? And as Muslims, my brothers and sisters, when we hear something like this, we should be offended. Because the crux of our faith is tawheed is to submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. That is what makes our deen special. A deen, a religion, a faith of sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We worship Allah without intercessors, without intermediaries. We have a direct connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no faith on earth who can claim to be monotheistic the way Islam is monotheistic. There is no faith on this planet that can claim to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with purity and sincerity without partners. And so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do you see the one who has taken their own desires as their God, we should say, A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim We seek refuge in Allah from the shaitan from being that person. How does one take their own desires as their God, our scholars tell us, by obeying their desires over the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, this is the mindset that we are talking about here. Right now, in 2022, in America, close to the capital, in the world that we're living in, this deen is not a deen that only is applicable 1400 years ago in the Arabian Peninsula. This deen is to be practiced here in the capital of the United States of America because this deen was sent just as much it was sent for the Arabian Peninsula 1400 years ago, just as much as it was sent for then, it was sent for now. For you, for me, and for the people around us. We may not feel that sometimes. We may feel alienated from our deen. We may feel like our deen is not applicable. The problem is not the deen, my brothers and sisters. The problem is our understanding, or should I say, dare I say, lack of understanding of the deen. And this is why my brothers and sisters, knowledge and understanding of our deen is so imperative to our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are people who despite having this deen, leave the deen of Allah. 
Why do, they lean the deen, why do they leave the deen of Allah? Because there's a problem in the religion of Allah? No. There's a problem in what they were exposed to. What people claimed to be the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we're living right now and we feel restricted by Islam, the problem is not Islam. The problem is our understanding of Islam. So the next time you're out there and you look at society and you say, you know what, Islam doesn't apply to me right now in 2022. With all the craziness that's happening around me, with all the temptations, with everything that has become normalized and so on and so forth. And I know we can lose hope and say morality has changed. Things that were considered immoral in this very country 20 years ago are now considered completely acceptable. What is the future? What is our future? And I know we're worried about our kids. And sometimes we lose hope and we think, you know, my kids cannot survive the temptations and the trials that are ahead of them. But I want to remind you, my brothers and sisters, Islam was not sent to a utopia. Islam was not sent to a perfect people. Islam was sent to a society that was knee deep in sin, in falahish, in temptation, in immorality. If Islam was able to correct and make a society that was deeply corrupt, more, uh, deeply corrupt, a moral society at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, without a doubt, Islam has the ability to do that right now, today, in 2022. That is our faith, my brothers and sisters. That is our Islam. That is our identity. So when we walk out there and we feel like a minority, we feel like we're not the majority, we feel different. We feel like we are alien, even though many of us, myself included, born and raised in this country. I don't know any other culture the way I know American culture. That's my culture. But yes, sometimes as a Muslim, you can feel alienated. But my brothers and sisters, that is the same trial. That is the trial that the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam themselves went through. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his own society, in his own community, he felt alienated because society had gone astray. And so my brothers and sisters, instead of lamenting over how bad things have gotten, it is imperative that we educate ourselves. It is imperative that we are there for one another. It is imperative that we help one another in the trials that are in front of us. Because that is how we're going to make it through this. My brothers and sisters, the Prophet Sallallahu he said, Alaykum bil jama'a. He said, I urge you, I urge you to stick to the jama'a, to stick to the congregation. Look around you right now. The people around you are your source of strength. There are your help. There are the ones that are in this together with you. We're not alone. Alhamdulillah, the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is present, is thriving, and the fact that we are all gathered here in this room today is testimony to that very fact, that we are not alone in this journey, my brothers and sisters. And now for a moment, I want to speak to the younger generation. I want to speak to the teenagers and I want to speak to their parents in the few moments that I have left. I know that sometimes we can feel alienated, sometimes you can feel alienated from Islam. And I know that the teenage years are a time in your life where you're going through changes, when you want to assert your own identity and you want to assert your independence, you want to be your own person, you want to establish yourself. But my brothers and sisters, remember that nothing will bring you honor and pride the way your deen will bring you honor and pride. As much as you may feel that by following someone else, even though they're different than, their, than your parents or than your community, that you have somehow rebelled and established yourself, that will never bring you honor. It will never bring you satisfaction the way the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring you satisfaction because in the end of the day, when you put your head on your pillow at night, it is not about your parents, it is not about your family, it's not about your community, it is about you. It is about your sense of self-worth. Where does your self-worth come from? Does it come from how many people like you? Does it come from how, how, part, how much a uh, part of society you feel? 
or does it come from your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And I close with that, my brothers and sisters. Aqulu qawli hadha, astaghfirullah li wa lakum, fa astaghfiruhu innahu al-ghafur rahim. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.